Today I am sharing eight oil painting tips for beginners. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Log Cree Fine Art. Tip number one, the paper towels you use really matter when you're working with oil paint. Regular paper towels like Bounty or I don't I don't know what other regular paper towels they are. They're too papery. The oil and the mineral spirits we use or paint thinner that we use don't play nice with them. A little drop just kind of takes over. You end up making an absolute mess. If you're gonna use paper towels, use Viva. These are very cloth-like and they are wonderful for oil painting. Inevitably, I will have somebody leave a comment. No, you're wrong. I use regular paper towels all the time. You could also claim that wearing one shoe around town works just fine. I mean, what is your definition of fine? Trust me, there's a huge difference between Viva and the other types of paper towels just because it is very cloth-like. You could also use a rag. If you don't want to use paper towels at all, an old t-shirt, old rags, those work great too. The point is that you want something that's very cloth-like. Tip number two, you can make things a lot easier on yourself by painting and underpainting in monochromatic colors. So it could be black and white, it could be sepia like I'm doing here in this painting. By painting this in two separate stages, one, in monochromatic colors, all I have to worry about, I'm getting my shapes the way that I want them, I'm, I'm getting my values about where I want them, everything is blocked in. I don't have to worry about color, I'm just worrying about shapes, and values and things like, do I want a harsh line, a soft line, those things. By doing that separately, I just removed one of the challenges from the equation. So then when I start glazing color on top of that, now that's easier. I've already got the other stuff blocked in. I have the values in, I have the shapes done. So I've kind of separated these two challenges. So I'm only focusing on this set of, of, of challenges and now I'm only focusing on this set of, how many times can I say challenges? I mean, it's the right word for the job. I guess we'll just keep repeating it. I need to increase my vocabulary. But when I start in with color, I already know where things go. I'm not having to try to mix the color I want on top of figuring out where things are supposed to be placed and such. So it just can make things easier. Do you have to paint monochromatic first? No, your painting can look just the same if you don't. It's just one of those quick little tips that can make things a bit easier. Tip number three, a little paint in oils goes a very long ways. Unless you're painting with a palette knife or doing the thick, chunky paint, you really just need to put a small amount on your palette. Add more as needed, but there's no reason to waste the paint. When I first started with oils, it was probably over 20 years ago, but I had started with acrylics. With acrylics, I tend to go through paint a lot faster. I buy bigger tubes. So when I got started with oil, I thought I needed bigger tubes with that as well. Not so much. White and black, those are colors that I go through faster, but for the most part, all of the rest of the colors, I bought this tube of French ultramarine blue probably about 20 years ago, right when I started thinking I needed these huge tubes. You just, you don't. The, all, that small amount, that tube has lasted me and I barely put a dent in it. I use liquid, which is my mixing medium, faster than I use the oil paint. So when you're putting them on your palette, just put a small amount out on there, add a little bit more as needed. This can save you a lot of money in the long run. Those of you working with palette knife or thick chunky paint, that doesn't really apply to you. You do go through it faster. four, use a limited color palette. If you are struggling with mixing color, less, and this is true for any medium, less colors and learning to blend from that fewer color, fewer color choice. We're not here for grammar. You learning to mix from the, the I, I don't know how to word that. 
I think you guys get the point. Learning to mix from less colors, you are going to learn more about color, color mixing than if you tried to put every color out on the, the palette. Less colors is going to benefit you. This can also help to make sure that your end painting has a really nice harmony in colors. If let's say you put out a yellow and a blue and you mixed your green from that, you know that green works with the rest of your colors because it was made from the rest of those colors. So you're learning to mix, you're going to more likely than not have a more pleasing end painting because you weren't just using eight different greens and four different blues. Mix what you need from a smaller selection of colors on that palette. is the palette setup itself. I personally use a New Wave glass palette and it's inside a Masters, Masterson. I'll have a link in the video description of the supplies I use, but I have it sitting in that. It's kind of like a big Tupperware, so it seals it off. My paint stays wet for a very long time. It also keeps greyhounds from sticking their snoot in the palette when I'm not in the room. The thing with oils, and oils are the only one that I do this with, I always put the same color in the same place every time. My magentas and purples always go in this corner. My greens always go in this spot, then blues, then browns. I know that they're always in the same place. You might think, wow, that's a little obsessive. Why would you do that? Because a lot of these colors, the purples, blues, greens, uh, browns, blacks, they all look pretty much the same. And it is so easy. If you're not sure that you've got purple here and black down here, it is very, very easy to grab the wrong one and not find out till you hit the canvas. That is frustrating. Make your life easier. Put the colors in the same place every single time. The only exception for me on that, I go back and forth on sometimes yellow and red. They switch places, but it's really easy to see which one's which there. So I don't worry about that. But when you get into these darker colors, if you know, blue is always right here in the upper middle section of my palette. I don't have to worry about it. If you head over to my website, I'll put a link in the video description. If you want to download the way that I do my palette, you can you can save this and use it yourself, but it will make for far less accidents if you know that certain colors are always in the same place. What if I'm using two different greens or two different blues? I just stick them side by side. And when you mix them out, you'll start to, to be able to tell what they are, but at least you're, you're minimizing the risk of grabbing black when you meant purple or, or something like that. Are you enjoying this bead painting? If you want to follow along with me over on Patreon, I've got the two and a half hour version tutorial for this available for you now for as little as four dollars a month you get access to all of my longer tutorials i have seven years worth of videos available immediately when you sign up i've been doing these lessons for a very long time so you get over 300 lessons for as little as four dollars a month that's a crazy good price. My lessons now have downloadable steps that you can print or save to your computer so you can see where you should be at whatever given step that lines up with the video you're following along with too. I'm making some improvements over there with my lessons. Patreon's got tons of different rewards too, so if you want to check those out, see what's a fit for you, head over to patreon.com slash lawcree or over to my website lawcree.com where you're able to see my full Patreon video library to see if those are going to be a fit for you. Tip number six, don't over blend. This is a very common mistake with oil paints. They stay wet for a long time and so they're really easy to blend. So what I've seen students do a lot, they'll make two or three brush strokes where they're blending and they really should stop there. But they're like, wow, two or three brush strokes, this looked awesome. So 50 must look better, right? No, no. No, please don't do that. Just a couple of brush strokes is normally all you need when you're blending out any of your brush strokes. If you sit there and blend and blend and blend, you're almost stirring or mixing those colors together to the point where let's say you were trying to make a cloud scene where you've got darker blues and then you've got the light blues for the clouds. You keep blending and now you have a medium blue for the whole canvas and it's just, it's a mess. I would rather see something under blended than over blended for sure. Speaking of over blending, that brings us to tip number seven. 
let it dry. This is probably the biggest challenge for most people going into oil painting is understanding when you want to let a, a, a layer dry. When you're working with acrylics or another medium, it dries very, very quickly. You can sit there for eight hours straight painting and have no ill effects. Dry it in between. With oils, you can't really do, well, sort of, you can do that. But for the sake of what we're talking about here, you can't really do that. If you hit a point where the paint just feels slippery, things are blending and mixing together in a way that you really just didn't, it's not doing what you want it to do, that's a pretty good sign. Stop, let it dry. At the very least, let it tack up. What do I mean by tack up? It will get to the point as it starts to dry where it feels a little bit more sticky when you put a brush stroke over it versus when it's really wet, it's very slippery. So when it starts to tack up, get a little sticky, you can typically go ahead and start painting on top without the, the two layers completely mushing together. But when it gets to the point where everything is very slippery and you put one, let's say you're painting a flower petal and you've got your bright red and you needed a highlight of orange on the underside, when it's too wet, those colors are just mixing together. And depending on what colors you're using, if things are mixing together too much, this is how we create mud in oil paints. You've probably often heard people talk about mud. That is why that is happening. So. So let it dry in between layers. As soon as things start feeling slippery, it's getting messy, just stop, let it dry. If you use liquid like I do, I paint in very, very thin layers. So everything I do is dry overnight and ready for my next layer. But if you're using thicker paint or you're using a different type of mixing medium, like uh, there's safflower oil, there's tons of other oils. If you're using something that dries slower, you may have to wait longer. But if you get in the habit of letting it dry once it gets, gets too slippery and things are making a muddy mess, just stop, come back to it the next day. Okay. number eight, the varnish. Most varnishes that you find at the stores say that the painting needs to be dry for six months before you can varnish it. If you are selling your work, that's not really practical. So the product that I use instead, which is a, an amazing varnish anyway, is Gamvar by Gamblin. This is amazing. You can, as soon as the painting is dry to the touch, you can go ahead and varnish it and you're ready to go. So again, for me, because I paint in light layers, I use a fast drying medium, that is the liquid, I'm ready to varnish within a few days typically. And the nice thing here, when you're painting, if you use a lot of liquid in one area and less in another area, the area where there was more liquid is going to be very shiny. So you get these hot spots. When you put a varnish over it, it's going to even all that out. Everything will have that nice, even, even gloss and look amazing. is my finished bee painting. Remember, if you want to follow along, you can head over to patreon.com slash lawcree and to paint this guy along with me. You know I have to have a bonus tip. I almost always have a bonus tip at the end of these videos. Common question people have is the idea of fat over lean when it comes to oil painting. For me, it's not something that I'm really concerned about because every single one of my layers is almost exactly the same, like fatness, leanness, however you want to put that, typically more lean in my case, as the next layer. I don't work in very fat layers. And by fat layers, I mean thick paint, like really heavy, thick paint that is not thinned with paint thinner or liquid because that is a fast drying medium. I consider that something that thin, thins the, the paint. What the fat over lean thing comes down to is you don't want to have a really thick layer of paint that's going to be very slow to dry and then put something on top of it, a thin layer that dries very quickly, whether that be you thinned it with paint thinner or liquid or whatever you're using. You don't want to put that thin layer on top because it's going to dry faster than the bottom layer and that can cause issues in the long run. So you want, if you're going to, going to be painting really thick layers, you want to save those for your top layers of the oil painting. You want the thin layers, the layers that dry the fastest to be on the bottom. But Again, if you paint like I do, where all of the layers are fairly thin, then it's not something that you really have to worry too much about. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have the handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube may or may not notify you when I have new content go up. So also click on the bell notification icon that is more likely that you'll be notified and sign up for my email newsletter. I send out an email once a week, letting you know whatever content I had go up.